Thank you folks, thank you for joining us. Now's the time where you could move back to speaker view and uh, start focusing on the speakers. I'm just gonna say a few words of thank you. I really wanna thank um, our audience for being a part of this this week and joining us for these conversations and seeing all the films. We had record numbers of participants, um, much higher than we could ever do in person. So we will never meet in person again. We'll just keep doing this virtually and leave it like this. I'm kidding, we can't wait to see all of you in person and, uh, and do not wanna to have to do this again. <laughs> um, um, but of course we are continuing with films all summer long um, virtually and hopefully eventually in person. So please be sure to follow all of our screenings, many Israeli films to come. Not and you'll hear more about some of them in a moment, um, but not just on, um, not just as part of the festival, we're gonna have them um, year round here. So keep joining us for more. Um, I wanna give a big thank you for all the support from the Marlene Myers from JCC, from um, Joy Levitt, our executive director, um, to all of our partners. You saw the partner page at the end of the trailer. Check out all the fabulous partners we have um, at our website's partner page. Um, we couldn't do any of this without our partners. Um, but especially, I want to thank our team here. Um, first of all, Yara Kedem, Yara, give a wave. Yara, finally, we can see everybody in person. Uh, Morgan, get your camera on. Yara Kedem is our associate director. Morgan Maggot is our program manager. Sam, could you, is your camera on? Um, Sam is, has been handling the AV for all these amazing conversations, and um, uh, we feel like uh, we run it like a morning show. So thank you for um, all of that, and this amazing team has been answering all of your questions all week long. So thank you to this amazing team if you have supported this. Um, when we first started our Israel Film Center, the uh, Israeli film industry was a budding industry and our goal was to bring it to the public. And Carol Zabar, our supporter, um, helped us do that. And I'd say not only thanks to us, but um, we, we're really proud to be part of that movement that now the Israeli film industry is just exploding and every year we have fantastic films, so many wonderful films of so many different kinds to show. And the interesting part of this year's films I've noticed is that um, they were mostly like not on any of the classical themes of Israel that you would expect. Um, and, and that just shows the diversity of life in Israel and the humanity and the universality of these stories. And, um, and it's really just quality storytelling and that's what we like to bring. Um, especially at this time in our world, um, we're really grateful to our community because we see the power of the community. And um, with that in mind, I'm gonna start the conversation with um, our filmmakers and we're really excited to have here um, both the director of the film, Donnie Menken. Please welcome Donnie. Donnie, you can say hi. <laughs> and the producer of the film, Hello. Nancy Spielberg. Nancy, thank you for being here. Um, so with that in mind, with everything that's going on in our world today, and um, most of our films did not connect to the subjects of, of the relationship with the black community, with the African-American community, um, I feel that Elsie Perry actually, I had seen it. I remember Donnie had shown me a cut early, early on before it was finished. And I, it's been a while since I've seen it, but watching it now gives it a very different perspective. What do you, what do you think about that? Donnie, do you want to start? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to because one of the first thing, things that Elsie wanted to show in the film is, is where he came from. And Olsi was part of the riots uh, in the 60s and in the 70s. He was born in Newark, New Jersey, that was known to be a slam in a place where you're either going to play basketball or have another profession that will take you out of the ghetto or you'll be part of the statistics. And luckily, miraculously, Olsi found his path in Israel after he was the last to be cut from the Knicks, from the NBA. And then when we started the film, he really wanted to show what he was going through. There were a lot of things that actually were cut out of the, in, in the edit room that Olsi remembers as an African-American, that he was beaten. 
He was not allowed to go to clubs. And whoever knows Olsi, with everything that he went through, he was never aggressive, was never violent. He cannot touch and not kill a fly. And, uh, you know, uh, he was talking a lot about the bond between the Jewish community and the African-American community. And one of the beauty that he saw in Israel is the fact that nobody judged him by the color. He was just Ossie Perry, an incredible, talented personality that changed the country in so many ways. And the love story that we show in the movie between him and Tammy was a biracial um, love story. I, I remember that I just, uh, a week ago, there was a protest of Black Lives Matter, very peaceful, very beautiful, out of our home. And I took a picture of myself and my family. Uh, we respected very much that uh, peaceful protest. And I, I, I sent it to Olsi <laughs> and told you it's for you, brother. Uh, because uh, I don't think in the history of things, I, I would ever thought that I would be the one <laughs> uh, going and respecting those protests. And, and, and Olsi will be the one living right now in Israel. <laughs> Nancy, did you want to add anything on this topic? Yeah, you know, um, Osi says in the film, like, what's Israel? I didn't know anything about Israel. I thought I'm just going to do a lot of praying there. And then his buddy says, like, Israel, where is that? And it, that kind of disconnect is something that hopefully a film like this can bridge. You know, sometimes it is the lack of understanding of another culture that creates a lot of ill feelings. And so even their curiosity and not really understanding what, it, what Israel was about, what Judaism was about, and then going down that path. And the discovery that he was, Osi was taken into the arms of all of those, his, his teammates, they were his brothers. They were there to help him when he got out of jail. They actually lent him money to start a business when he went back to Israel after um, he was released from prison. And so that connection, showing that the camaraderie and, the, and that family, you know, I think that's so important. It's a me message that we need to send forward through the African-American community, the Jewish communities, because we need to get a little bit back together. You know, we need to bond a little bit better. Of course, that's wonderful. Um, and and I, I feel like the JCC is very specifically working on that, and that's something that is, is high on our agenda. Um, so thank you for both for, for keeping that in your minds. Um, I'm actually going to do this a little bit backwards, and actually I'm really interested to start not with Donnie and his where this came from for him, um, but Nancy, did you know who L.C. Perry was before you met Donnie? And, and I, I, I'm wondering how many people in our audience actually knew. I think every Israeli knows who Elsie Perry is. Um, I actually moved to Israel after Elsie Perry was, was playing, and, and yet I knew who he was because it, it was just a terminology. Anytime you saw somebody tall, they were called Elsie um, Perry. And I just, just somehow, somehow learned that that was the term for like, you know, the center. Um, but Nancy, how did you get involved? What, what made you want to produce this film? Well, first of all, I, and I was in Israel in 75, 75 to 76, I was on a kibbutz. And that was like when uh, Maccabi was sort of, you know, on fire and I didn't know anything. I was chasing soldiers, not basketball players. So you know, <laughs> I was doing something else. And I really wasn't even into sports that much but I met Donnie and Donnie and I were just saying we met at the JCC when he had just uh done on the map and I had just done above and beyond so we we're you know we we're like chasing each other in film festivals with our films we got together to work on above and beyond and make it a, a larger film with a little bit more of an American presence and I learned about OC through uh on the map through I I meant on the map that's when I first learned about OC I didn't know anything about it but not only do I love uh, Donnie, I love the story. I love the story of, um, you know, the per person that against all odds gets themselves out of a bad situation, but then falls from grace, but then it's about redemption, you know? So going through those highs and lows, those are the wonderful stories that I'm interested in and it's Israel. 
So, you know, that's, that's got my, uh, my gold star. And now that's great. Donnie. So where, where did you all come from for you? And um, why did you want to tell the story? And I know you have a, a big love for Maccabi Tel Aviv. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I was, I, I was not different than any other kid my age then in the 70s and in the 80s. I was a big Maccabi Tel Aviv fan because everybody were, because Maccabi Tel Aviv put us on the map. However, when I became a filmmaker, I knew that one of the first stories I want to bring to the United States, for some reasons, I, I, I always wanted to bring good stories to the U.S. It's like, you know, a soccer player wants to play in England or a basketball player wants to make it to the NBA. I said, you know, okay, what is the one thing that I can bring that they don't know so much about? And, and, and the story for me was also, I started to write a narrative feature film based on his life. And then also, um, had a, a severe problem with his rota, which we show in the beginning of the film. And I'm visiting him in the hospital. And he tells me, Danny, I, and I'm chasing after his life runs. I'm like, oh, see, when you're ready, when you're ready, I'm here, when you're ready. <laughs> you know, I was already a filmmaker. He saw 39 pounds of love. He said, you know, if anyone will do it, you'll do it. And I was chasing after him. The one place I could chase after him, he would not run away, was a hospital. I just visited, I just went to visit him there. And Ossie tells me, you know, that's the time for me to tell the story because I have this daughter of mine that nobody knew anything about. Now we graduate of stories like 39 Pounds of Love or Is That You, Rotary Films. Uh, I fell in love with the idea of telling that as a Rotary film. So he, in many ways, telling the story to the daughter that knows nothing about that knows nothing about him. And while he's looking for her, while we, we don't know if he'll find her or not, he's telling us the story and also revealing all the dark secrets that he never wanted to talk about. And that was the biggest um, challenge because Ossie really didn't want to talk about those things. I saw the pain. It was hard. I was struggling to take it out of him. So I was... I admired him at one point, at some point, but I also had to do my job as a filmmaker to take all those things that also didn't want to talk about. And uh, at some point, everything came up together. Uh, when we came to the US uh, with the, on the map and I joined forces with Nazi Spielberg and with John Weinbach, who has just made the movie about Karim Abdul-Jabbar. And I told him, look, also is our Karim Abdul-Jabbar. And now John Weinbach has made the last dance that everybody loves. And I always knew that even though On the Map has such a special arc to it because it really tells the history of the country through basketball, also has a bigger than life elements because it's a love story and it has an important message. And also we can, and that's something that I thought of before what is happening now, we can also show a beautiful side of Israel to the African-American community. So what we're trying to do, and Nancy and I are talking a lot about it and working on it, is to bring Osi to the U.S. to talk to different communities, to show how he fell in love with the country. Um, really fabulous. And I think, I think a lot of it, I think you, there's a beautiful human story. There's, you know, just a great, like Hollywood, as you mentioned, it could, be, it could just be a great fictional film. Um, and to really bring in the whole daughter element, I think also um, brings it brings it home in a lot in a lot of nice ways. And um, so, great job on on that. Um, so, what are the reactions? How? I'm, what I'm actually most interested in are the different reactions between the Israeli audience and American audiences. Israelis audience. Nancy, when you talk to Israelis, I mean, it, it happened with on the map because I remember when we started to work with Nancy, she said. Oh my God, I spoke to Ido Haroni. I spoke to this guy, that guy, everybody knows about it. So it's, I mean, I, I'm interested in, in Nancy's perspective and then I can uh, elaborate. Uh, I, I, I am interested in both of your perspectives on this. Yes, Nancy. So, so what was interesting is when I started to mention like on the map and I would talk to any Israeli, every Israeli would say, I was here, I was with this one. I knew what I was wearing. I knew what I ate for dinner. It was like 
where were you when you mm -hmm. don't forget any it just seemed to be a galvanizing force that moved the entire country spiritually emotionally uplifted them and and oc you know so whether it was on the map or oc it's that same thing it really moves israeli audiences it's oc is one of theirs you know that's how they feel it's one of ours it's like they're they're very proud um of this piece of history in america people don't necessarily know him so it's it's sort of interesting to introduce him to Jewish and not Jewish audiences and see uh, the reaction. Mm -hmm. Danny, you've been going to a lot of these American, uh, uh, Jewish film festivals. What's, what are you finding that the American audiences are most connecting to? I, I think the, the most beautiful thing for me is to bring a story that they will tell me after that, you know, where the hell did you find it? I mean, it happened a lot with On the Map. Because I was sure, <laughs> I, living in Israel, it's a bubble, size of New Jersey, and we think we're the center of the world. In many ways, we probably are, <laughs> but it was, it was very, very shocking to, to see that nobody knew about this unbelievable event that there are six American players that didn't make it to the NBA. One of them gives up on the NBA, and they are beating the Russians during the Cold War. It changes the country. The prime minister resigned the day of the game. They're winning the European Championship. And nobody in the United States knows about it. They know about the miracle on ice. Big deal. America beats Russia in hockey. Big deal. It's, it's Israel beating the Russians. And the captain says, we are on the map. And that changes the country. And, and my first story was not on the map. My first story was Olsi. I always wanted to tell his story. He was the fish out of water. And Olsi Perry's story crosses from the basketball with his unbelievable love story with Tommy, which you can just make a movie about that. Mm -hmm. with, with a drug story, we, you can just make a movie about that. His relationship with his father figure, Shabluk, that is the reason why he comes back to Israel and, and the country does, never forgets about it. You can just make a movie about that and looking for his daughter, Guess what? You can just make a movie about that too. So putting it all together was my challenge and, and making sure I'm bringing something to the American audience that they will say, oh my God, where the hell did you find this guy? I mean, again, my, my good friend John Weinbach is doing The Last Dance, wonderful piece. We know Michael Jordan, you know? <laughs> it's beautiful. I could not stop watching. Well done, incredible. But we're bringing something you have never seen and, and some of you have never heard. It's so funny. This, this is the time for this kind of film. And, you know, you, we, we had the same thing with There Are No Lions in Tel Aviv. Um, you know, there's, there, we, we found that that might be connected to some popular Netflix shows right now that won't be mentioned. But, um, <laughs> but um, this is, I think this is right now looking for these good stories, these good human stories that are relating to basketball when we don't have our basketball season. Um, uh, this might be the time for it. Um, before I want, I, we have a lot of questions coming up from the audience. And by the way, folks, if you want to ask questions, please put them in the chat box and um, we will open your mic so you can ask them live. Um, but I wanted to know, tell us about, um, about what else is coming up for you right now as far as uh, releases of films during this pandemic. So, uh, yeah, so, so together, Donnie and I have some together, a little bit separate. Um, Picture of His Life is the film that we will be releasing virtually on June 19th. And I think, uh, Isaac, you said that you guys are one of our partners in that. And, you know, this is a new age and, and we all have to be very agile and figure it out. And we'll see how that goes because theatrical openings are not happening right now. Um, so that's June 19th. And Donnie and I have also been working on a feature film for On the Map. Um, so that's, you know, and of course, until production start again, it, it, that takes a little bit of time. Uh, with Roberta Grossman, who I did, who wrote her history, and Laura Bialis, who did Rock in the Red Zone, we're doing a film about Roman Vishniak, but that's uh, separate from Dani. And, um, uh, in, you know, I'm still trying to work on Above and Beyond developing that as a feature film as well. So there's a lot of stuff in the hopper. Mm -hmm. Nice. 
Danny, are you working on any new films? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm turning uh, my documentaries into fiction. So, you know, I, I mentioned that I worked on the script uh, about Olsi, so I have a screenplay about that. We're working on, uh, on the map, so whoever wants to partner with us and get a credit, even in the documentary that is frozen now, uh, can reach out Nancy and I through uh, Yara and uh, Yitzi. <laughs> this is the part of our, uh, our, uh, our selling part. And he'll get a basketball signed by Tal Brody and Ossie Perry and, uh, and uh, ourselves. And then I'm working on a, a screenplay based on Dolphin Boy, uh, which is one of my favorite films that uh, also shows uh, the human side and shows it, it, it's a little bit of a story about uh, hate crime and post-trauma. And uh, I, I love to capture universal themes and, and, and show that in, in in life, there are no colors. I don't know, Nancy, if you know if there is a director who made the movie uh, Color Purple. Uh, you heard about him? Familiar, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think, you know, those films stay with you and they teach uh, young generation something. You know, if I can bring that to, um, to the world, um, I would be happy. Uh, it, it, it's Nancy's uh, anniversary right now, and Nancy's oh, right. Shimon, so, so Mazal Tov. Thank and, you. And, 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 and I'm turning to a very special age uh, in, in, in a week. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you're asking yourself, what can you bring to the world? Can you do good? Can you, can you um, make an impact? And I'm trying to continue doing it. And, uh, and with the narrative, it's, it, will be, it will be lovely. I love doing that. Fabulous. We're, we're excited to, to see what comes next. We've had every one of Donnie's films here and he's uh, fantastic. And Dolphin Boy, I have to, I, I don't like choosing between your children, but um, Dolphin Boy <laughs> is a very special film to us, um, as, as you know. Sorry, folks, so the sun is setting behind me and I realize that the sun, the light, I keep trying to block out the lights um, as best as I can. We'll, we'll try to get them to stop that. Sam, if you could work <laughs> me on the sun support. Um, I want to take some questions from the audience. I had one last question, which was, um, I felt that Olsi's relationship with Israel developed at a very innocent time. Would you say that that still exists, that that, that story, that, that an Olsi Perry can be a part of Israel today, or, or is that innocence gone? I think that, yeah. I, I definitely think that it still exists. And, Listen, if you want to talk about African-American basketball players, you have Stoudemire there. You have some other people that co go to Israel. Maybe they go to Israel for basketball, but they fall in love with the country. And they end up making it their home. And so I do still think that, uh, yes, there's complicated times in Israel, but there's still a, a very pure connection and love that sometimes it's just hard to put into words when, when you're there. Mm -hmm. And Nancy, remember, she was in kibbutz in uh, 1976, right? Yeah. You know, so uh, she, she remembers the country. I mean, I remember it as a child. So I don't know if I remember a naive country because I, I was naive and I was a child. <coughs> uh, but what I try to show in both films, in On the Map, and in many ways, uh, also is kind of the sequel of On the Map, the sequels that turned into a, a, a totally different place. But I did want to show that we were innocent, we were naive, uh, without getting into politics, but Prime Minister resigned over a few thousand dollars in a bank account during, during the game. It's different, and, and Moshe Dayan shaking their, their hands. Uh, the country was not, uh, you know, uh, clean from flaws. It, it did have that, but at least what I remember as a child, so I tried to, I'm a very nostalgic person, so I try to capture <laughs> what I miss from the country that I grew up with. And the way everybody looked up for uh, Olsi uh, was beautiful. I, I think it still exists in some ways in Israel, uh, but we are, the country has doubled its age. So uh, some things have changed. Yeah. 
Um, this is a good opportunity to actually give a huge thank you to our wonderful supporters, the Israeli consulate and the Council for Cultural Affairs and um, uh, the folks from that department, uh, Bumi Kochavi and Daniel Zuz, um, who have been wonderful supporters of this festival. Um, let's grab some questions from the audience and uh, we're going to hear first from um, it's, it's listed as Rebecca and Kevin. I don't know which one of you is going to ask, but uh, Rebecca or Kevin, your mic is on. Shalom. Hi. Can you hear us? Yes, it's Kevin, I guess. Hi. Yes. So first of all, thank you. It was really incredible film. Um, our question was, has Alsi used, uh, I guess, this, the um, forum of the love Israel has for him and his celebrity to advocate for the rights of, let's say, Ugandan Jews and Ethiopian Jews seeking equality in Israel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can, I can tell you that the, uh, when I started working with Olsi, he was very much connected to the Ashchorim uh, Ivrim uh, in Dimona, uh, the black Hebrew in Dimona which is a big community and he was part of them and he always advocate um, to that and, and he, he remember where, where he came from. And right now he's also very much without being politically at all. I mean, he can advocate for Israel from the bottom of his heart, but he doesn't forget where, uh, where he came from. He never forgot. We're going to take a question from Robin Jacobson. Robin, your mic is on. Okay, I just want to say it was a, a wonderful, wonderful film. And I was just um, curious, um, how is Alsi Al Al doing now? Hmm. Should I answer that? <laughs> um, he is doing great. He actually did have another medical scare and it was here in New York and it was really quite frightening. It was right after we had screened the film um, that he, the next morning he got very sick, lost consciousness, ended up in ICU for about a week and we thought it was aortic, the issue again. Um, it was about two weeks, a week here in the hospital, a week in the hospital in Israel and he recovered. I'm not sure if they even figured out exactly what happened. Uh, he was very emotional. This was, you know, showing his life in front of strangers with his daughter in the audience. Um, and I think it just took a, a toll on him. But he is great. He's uh, with Ahuva. He's got stepkids. He's got grandchildren. Um, he loves his life. And, and he's a kind soul. And, you know, it's sort of nice when you find somebody that has notoriety and they stay nice. You know, it's, it's refreshing when somebody stays humble and you can see it through the film, you can see the humility and, and it's refreshing. So he's doing great. Good. Thank you. Okay. We have a question from Robin. Robin, your mic is unmuted. I think I just went. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, do we, I think it's a different Robin or is it Anne yes. Turing? Robin Ann, Robin Ann. Robin Ann, there we go. So um, we did love the film, and during the film, also was very focused on um, finding his daughter and, and talking to, to his daughter to tell his daughter his story. But I'm not really clear who the daughter is and where she was born and who she was born to and why he left mm -hmm. them. Um, mm -hmm. I know about the son and I know about the Israeli children, but I just, I'm not getting the daughter picture. And I'll throw yeah. it to that also, I'll package in uh, Barbara Batsalo has a question of where is his daughter now? Yeah, okay, so his daughter now lives in uh, North Carolina by Riley. Uh, she was just with us just before the corona at, uh, together at the Atlanta Jewish Film Festival. We had an unbelievable screening there. And for your question about uh, who's the mother, so Alsi had the three big uh, loves in, in his life, and we showed them in the movie, Juanita, Tami, which we focused on mostly, and uh, now he's uh, with Ahuva. So in many ways, I will say that I will probably, 
I probably needed uh, to do serious about Olsi because he was not only good at basketball, <laughs> he was also good with the uh, women. And, uh, and the mother of Sierra was a, a pretty short uh, roman that Olsi had when he was in parole uh, after he was uh, sentenced. So that's who she is. But I understand that, you know, it's impossible to tell the entire story and also go from women to women to women because we will probably need another set of chunk of uh, movie to do that. Um, thank you. I want to, I want to, first of all, tell everyone right now, remind everyone the film that uh, Donnie mentioned before, Picture of His Life, is premiering June 19th, as I recall, June 19th. And if you go to jccfilm.org, you can actually watch it through the JCC as one of your virtual theaters. And uh, um, then some of the proceeds go to the JCC. So it's a good thing all around. Um, this week, we're gonna be screening through that virtual screening room, the fabulous film Aviva, some of the most amazing dancing, dancing on film I have seen. I was thinking today, uh, Nancy, about uh, West Side Story and this, it's shot in New York and there's dancing and, um, and it's just fantastic to watch a very provocative film. So um, you could check that out this week and we'll have a conversation. Um, but Donnie and Nancy, we hope to have you back um, for, that, uh, for that screening later, later this month and have another conversation. Um, I want to thank everybody again for joining us. I also want to thank another one of our supporters, Ron Gutman, who has uh, stepped up to support us um, for this festival. This year we um, announced a film fund for Israeli films, the Israel Film Center Film Fund. We've already supported um, two new Israeli films that will be coming out in the future, and we'll continue to make sure that this industry continues to thrive. Um, so please help support Israeli cinema, continue watching Israeli cinema as much as you can um, throughout the summer and make sure that this, this industry, especially now, um, continues to produce these international fantastic stories. Um, I want to thank you all again, once again, for being a part of this and everyone who has come throughout the week. Um, I've been reading in the chats how people have been joining from all over the country and it's great to see some people managed to join from all over the world, even though I'm pretty sure we geo-block these films. Um, <laughs> that's, it's wonderful, too, that people are finding ways to connect and be a part, especially at these times. Um, please, everyone, stay safe and be sure to join us for other films. Donnie and Nancy, thank you so much for this fantastic film. Thank you for joining us. Um, folks, if there's any other film from the Israel Film Center Festival that you wanted to watch, um, some are still available till midnight tonight, so this is your last chance for this week, but uh, hopefully there'll be more things to see next week. Um, thank you all, and we'll see you soon. Take care.